today we're going to learn a little bit about animation. Uh, we're going to learn something uh, that you can do at home really easily using not much at all. All you really need is a tablet or an iPad like this one. Maybe some paper, printer paper, cartridge paper. The thinner and cheaper the better actually with paper because you want it to be kind of see-through. And then your choice. You can use pencils, textures, paints, whatever you like to draw with charcoal. And you'll also need some space to do a bit of filming with your tablet and uh, making sure that you know, you've got a good lighting source and that kind of thing. So you might want those as well. But the basics are just a tablet, paper, and something to draw with. We're gonna be looking at rotoscoping. So rotoscoping is one of the earliest forms of animation. This goes right back to the uh, turn of the 20th century. And people like Walt Disney were experimenting with how to draw magical things and bring them to life. And they actually filmed people and then frame by frame drew over the top of the photos. And we're gonna be doing that ourselves. So we're looking at things like um, Walt Disney's first ever feature length film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. A lot of that was actually rotoscoped. And then right through the 20th century, it kept being used in Popeye, in Aha's film clip, Take Me On or Take On Me or whatever it was and the lightsabers in Star Wars, and Richard Linklater's film not that long ago, A Scanner Darkly. They were all rotoscoped, so they were filmed and then they were drawn over the top of. It's a great technique that you can do at home um, because it also combines modern technology with really traditional art forms. So it's a lot of fun. And you can make magic happen. Uh, for today's purposes, we're just gonna look at about two seconds worth of animation. Any more than that, would get really, really boring. So because we're gonna need about 12 to 24 frames per second, if we do two seconds, we're gonna need about 30 odd drawings. And that takes a while, of course. So have a think about what it is you want to do. Uh, do you want to walk onto the screen and transform? Do you want to become a cat or a dragon? Or do you wanna catch on fire or grow a beard or just turn invisible or fly away? All of this is possible and you can do any of it. I think for me, I think I might just be like a space person, like an astronaut. I might just come in and have a jetpack and fly away. So that's what my two seconds of action is going to be. For mine, I'm gonna to have to plan it out step by step. So if I imagine the screen that I want to finish with, it'll have me walking on stopping in the middle, triggering my jetpack, and flying out to the top left of the screen. So that's my sort of plan. And to do that, I might even just work out a couple of the major steps on paper. Just do some really quick scribbles about what it is. Stick figures are fine. Walking in the direction you're going and what the major points of action are. It's good to have that clarified in your brain before you actually go out there and and do it. Um, you might just uh, not know what to do. So think about what the entry point is for you on your screen. So if you imagine the screen right now, are you going to climb up from the bottom, walk in from the side, jump in from above, appear in a puff of smoke? Again, any of it's possible. Uh, you just have to think about what's best for your narrative, your sequence, what it is you're going to do and uh, think about the space that you've got. And in the next video, we will talk about setting up your tablet with a camera and on a suitable height, like a plinth or a ladder or something that you have around the house and how we go about shooting that action sequence of the roughly 30 shots that we're gonna to need to make this little animation. See you shortly. And now I'm gonna draw on the paper and make it look like I'm doing something. Okay, now we're out in the space ready to shoot our action sequence. So for us here, we've got a nice room with a big blank wall, a decent bit of empty floor space, and some reasonably good lighting. So your wall wants to be at least sort of six to 10 feet wide so that you can have a little walking uh, run through of your action and when you set up your camera 
make sure that you have it around about waist height or, or higher. My camera is around about my waist height here. And I've put it onto a plinth so that uh, it can be nice and stationary. But you could use anything around the house, you know, a table that's the right kind of height, a ladder, whatever you've got to just keep your iPad on or your tablet. Uh, I'm going to switch over to the camera. So the camera um, wants to be zoomed in to the point where it can see a little bit of the floor and your head without chopping either of those things off, obviously. You don't want to lose your head. And you do want to see where your feet are, otherwise it just looks a little bit weird, like you're hovering. Now, most modern tablets have some features within the camera that make this really simple, this process. So one of them is that you can burst your photos, holding it down, and it just runs through a whole lot of shots in a sequence. The same effect can be achieved with a friend. So if you've got a friend like cameraman Alex, they can come along and just press the button a whole heap of times as you do your action, and that works fine too. Another way of doing it is time-lapse. So most of these have time-lapse. Time-lapse is just a bit slower though, so you need to slow your movement down accordingly, but it will still work, it's just fine. Okay, so everything's set up. I'll also mention that in our case, it's a little bit dark today, so our natural light's just not quite bright enough. So I'm gonna bring in a light. So you can bring in a lamp or make sure that your room lights are up full or whatever you need to do but do make sure that lights bright enough to capture all the detail of this so I'm going to get set up my action is going to be walking across this wall clicking on my space suit to launch the rockets and I'm going to fly off the page obviously the flying bit happens in the drawing not in real life I can't do that so I'll be walking on Clicking my space pack and flying off like that is what I think I'll do. Ask me if I'm ready. Okay, are you ready to go, cameraman Alex? Very ready. <laughs> Excellent, let's do this. Okay, so I'm gonna hit burst in three, two, one, go. <laughs> let's see here, this is always very embarrassing. But it's for art. Cool, that looks all right. So, so you can see it's fairly well lit because of the speed of that camera. It's a bit blurry, but that's okay. <laughs> so if we go back through. So yeah, just go right back to the start there. Just cycle through them now. Okay. What do you think? I think it's okay. I think there's some really goofy pictures because I'm not the best model in the world, but I think it's okay for the purposes of rotoscoping. Okay, so now we've got enough photos to start our rotoscope. So back to the drawing board, back to our desk. Let's go. Now that we've done our photos, we should have about 30 images to work from to get two seconds of film. Obviously, if you want to do something much, much grander than that and work away at it, you can take as many photos as you want and just keep on working. So I've got my iPad back here. I've also grabbed the 30 bits of paper that I'm going to need. So for each photo that we took, we're going to need one piece of paper. For this, I'll put my iPad back down so I'm just going to lift it off of there. Keep it in front of me. Now, we're going to be tracing like a light box. And to do that on a tablet, we have to boost the brightness to the absolute maximum. So I've already done that. I've gone into the settings, gone to brightness and boosted it right up so that when I lay some paper over the top, I can see the photo through the paper. I've also gone and actually found the cheapest pieces of A4 paper I can find because they're just a bit thinner and a bit more see-through, which is actually good in this case. Uh, so we've got our bright bit of a bright screen, we've got a bit of paper. We also need to make sure that each piece of paper is in the same spot. 
So every time we draw this, it will be in the same position. So I'm gonna use a bit of masking tape. You can use a bit of sticky tape, even blue tape or something really. But I'm gonna put it onto the side of the screen uh, where I walk in from. And I'm just gonna tape, each time I do this, I'll tape it into the same position on the screen every single time. If we don't do that, of course, then the image moves around the screen and the whole illusion of animation doesn't work. And then it's just a matter of tracing. So this first pass at drawing is a really simple bit of tracing. You don't need the detail. In fact, you might not be able to see the detail through the screen. Don't worry if you can't. What you should be able to see because we've used a blank background is at least a good silhouette. So, oh, and actually another little thing, another trick is turning off the touch screen if you want to. So most tablets, you can also do that. There'll be something like in the settings, there'll be something like accessibility, uh, guided access, and you should be able to turn off some of the screen. So where you're drawing, you should be able to, so mine's actually turned off at the moment where I'm drawing, it won't work. And then I'm just simply gonna grab, for me, I'm gonna grab a little sort of bluish purple pencil for the first pass of this. But later on, I'll go over it with, uh, I might even go over it with ink. I might ink it like a traditional cartoon. But this is just a really light, so I'm actually drawing very lightly. And after I've done that, I can go back and look at the screen and then start to fill in that detail. But for this one, I just want to know that things are roughly in the right spot, that I'm not making a complete schmodel of it. So really sort of rough, got those feet in there. So because this bit's gonna take some time, we might do a bit of a, a bit of a montage. So I'm just sketching really lightly and not very carefully at this stage because we're gonna do a lot more work on this when we take it off the screen. If you can't see some of the detail, you can just sort of flip back and forwards. This piece of tape is holding things nice and secure so it won't move. And I just need to check on you know some of the more finer points like where the mouth and the eyes are positioned. That's basically that. When that's enough information right now, that's enough to get us going because uh, we need to do this 30 times, don't forget. So I don't want to spend an hour on every single one. We can add to it later. So we'll come back to that in our next step. But for now, we're going to remove that one, put it to the side and grab another bit of paper. Now I'm going to flip across one to there. So this frame was when I'm about to take off and the new bit of paper, and it's in exactly the same spot as the last bit of paper. So neatly butted up to the sides of the tablet, placing sticky tape down again, and making sure it's the same. And then we go again. Okay, that's enough for number two. Frame number two is done, so I'll take that off the screen. Get a third bit of paper. So remember, the same spot on the screen. Oh, flip to the next frame. Same spot on the screen. Sticky tape, making sure it's lined up to those same edges. And we go again. So you're getting the idea now. We just do that 30 times. Same thing over and over, just getting those little basic sketches done. In the next video, we'll talk about how we turn those into more fleshed out final frames ready for the finished animation.